what are three must know subjects for the fundamentals of surveying exam? The FS has an incredible amount of topics. They've basically taken a four year surveying engineering degree and they have condensed it down to a less than six hour exam. That is an incredible amount of information, but there's only so much they can test you on. And if you've taken the exam a few times, you realize it's kind of a one trick pony. There's different questions, there's different question types, but there's favorite topics. And if you study for these three favorite topics, you will prepare yourself for a passing score. All right, topic number one, trigonometry. The FS likes basic trig. So, it, and it likes to do it in kind of a problem-based format. So imagine a house and there's an antenna stuck on the house. They give you the elevation of the ground. They give you the elevation of the house. They give you the elevation of the antenna or something else. And they say, what is the, what is the angle subtended from the leaning antenna onto the house? Basic Sokotoa problem. No Sokotoa, know how to do solve for angles, know how to solve for distance. It's not that difficult if you practice properly. Second, priority of calls. Being a good boundary surveyor is important and you've got to appreciate junior senior rights, priority of calls, following the documents, all that good stuff. Priority of calls is typically in a list format. So what I mean by that is it's going to give you one, two, three, four, five, and it's going to say area, distance, natural monument, physical monument. Then the next option will be natural monument, man-made monument, bearing distance, area. And you have to choose which one of these four options is the true true hierarchy of the priority of calls. If you've done your studying in Browns, that's another slam dunk question. It could also give you a hypothetical. John Smith goes out to the field. He measures a bearing and distance, but it's different than the physical monument. What do you do? Well, you obviously hold the monument. And then subject three. Subject three is kind of two subjects in one. So COGO coordinate geometry has two options, inversing and stubbing. An inverse is where you have coordinates of point one, coordinates of point two, and it says, what is the bearing and distance? Run the formula. Again, we have COGO, but this time it's called stubbing. So a stub is where you have a monument and it says from the monument, go a certain bearing and distance. What is the second set of coordinates? What is the coordinates for monument B? Well, that's going to be your, you know, distance times cosine of theta, distance times sine of theta. You get the idea. But Kogo is important. Stubbing, inversing, no both. So to sum things up, before you go into your FS, I want to make sure you know how to do your trig functions cold. I want you to be able to tell me what is the priority of calls and what is the list. And third, how to do a stub and an inverse. If you can do these three things, you will be on your road to passing the FS exam, and I look forward to seeing you as the next professional surveyor. If you found this video helpful and informative, I would appreciate it if you would hit the thumbs up button to like the video, and then go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That way, more people can find this video and it can help them. Plus, when you hit the subscribe button, you'll be able to watch the newest NLC videos as soon as they come out.